Do you want to become a superhero in the digital world? Well, if so, you can with the ASRock B365M Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard with 12K Nichicon caps, 50 amp chokes, amazing onboard audio, and an Intel NIC to boot. This is geared up towards that gamer who wants value but isn't interested in overclocking. What are you waiting for? Links in description below. Intel vs NVIDIA. Who would have ever thought it would have come to this? Well, this could be what 2020 could be shaping up to be if the green counterpart dressed in blue releases their dedicated GPU solutions. And it's no joke. Last year, AMD's graphics division chief, Raja Kaduri, left AMD and moved to Intel, one which was considered very controversial at the time, and luckily for Raja, he worked in one of the very few places where a non-compete is void. In other words, he could freely go work for the competitor and bring with him all his knowledge, making him an invaluable asset to Intel and their future GPU endeavors. Since then, Intel's roadmap has been more open and more focused, with the likes of Sunny and Willow Cove looking to further enhance their CPU architecture in the form of latency, cache, branch prediction, and algorithmic enhancements. However, while Intel faces fierce competition from AMD's Ryzen, the GPU market has, in many people's opinions, been dominated by one particular force, NVIDIA. Steam GPU ownership numbers also further cement this, with the top 13 GPUs on Steam being all NVIDIA variants, with the GTX 1060 alone accounting for roughly 15% in January 2019. That's some Team Green domination right there. So, Raja diversifying Intel's portfolio in 2020, allowing Intel to enter the market of discrete graphics cards, is going to be a huge shakeup. Currently, AMD sets aside an R&D budget of $1.4 billion. That is, money for research and development, which is needed to improve products and enhance their designs to smaller node transistor sizes, for example. This budget is also shared between the Ryzen CPU division and GPU division, which further complicates things, though it has increased substantially since 2015. Though Nvidia, on the other hand, has a budget of $1.8 billion in 2018, and that is solely directed at GPU innovation. So proportionate to the battle of AMD vs Nvidia, Nvidia would have a lot more resources set aside to improve their lineup of GPU architecture. When we look at Intel, however, they set aside in 2018 alone a jaw-dropping $13.1 billion. This nearly is tenfold that of AMD alone and ranks in the top five R&D spenders in the world for 2018. With this kind of R&D at their disposal and talent such as Raja Kaduri leading the field, it seems as if Intel is going to be able to have an excellent shot at bringing a third major player into the field of dedicated graphics solutions, whether that be for business use or gaming purposes. Currently, Intel only really delves into the graphics compute field with their onboard HD graphics. And in fact, their 9th gen onboard graphics actually don't have anywhere near the processing power directly compared to AMD's Ryzen Vega solutions. For example, a Ryzen 3 2200G processor, which is currently $100 and is a 4-core CPU part with onboard graphics, currently outperforms an i9-9900K's dedicated onboard HD 6000 graphics solution in gaming titles. Their graphics are currently behind the competitors to the point where they actually licensed AMD's Vega graphics and created their own hybrid solution for their Intel NUX. This saw the graphics compute performance of the Intel NUX skyrocket to that, which would near replicate a mid-range graphics card like the RX 570. Seeing the potential of this power in the Vega NUX successful sales and form factor, I believe has propelled Intel to pursue dedicated GPU compute power like no other. However, despite currently having lackluster onboard GPU performance, Intel do offer benefits with their HD graphics, like QuickSync, which is the ability to utilize the graphics portion, which is usually not utilized on most people's gaming PCs, to things like streaming applications and Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, which can greatly reduce stuttering and drop render times in the case of video editing. Generation 11 of integrated graphics for Intel, however, is also on the way in 2019, and it sees their HD graphics breaking one teraflops barrier, and on top of that, it supports Adaptive Sync too. So like gaming on the fly for hours without a dedicated wall power socket should be made possible in 2019, though mobile Ryzen solutions from AMD I'm sure could do this also. Though going back down memory lane, this is not the first time Intel has delved into the realm of dedicated GPU solutions. Back in 2009, Intel had a dedicated GPU in the works, codenamed Project Larrabee. It ended up being totally scrapped due to having delays and also ultimately having lackluster performance figures. It was also a very unique design, utilizing the x86 architecture, 
the same of that of a typical desktop processor, yet also offering its own unique Larabee instruction set extensions. The hybrid coherent cache system and also SIMD vector unit integrated design meant things like real-time ray tracing apparently would have been possible, and that it could also compete with the likes of big ticket players at the time, like the GTX 200 series and also Radeon 4000 series graphics cards. Though Nvidia laughed at the performance of the time and said it resembled something from that of 2006, where in those times GPU innovation was rapid and not keeping up meant no sales, which is in turn why this GPU architecture was ultimately pulled. Though, fast forward now to 2019 and now we're seeing things like real-time ray tracing and also more importantly a stagnation of price performance improvements, node shrinks and raw IPC architectural gains. Personally, I think it's a perfect time for Intel to enter the GPU market and really make some noise. To further add fuel to the fire, Intel has the intention of a One API software initiative, where currently we have so many APIs in use, DX11, DX12, OpenGL, and Vulkan to name a few. Intel plans to simplify this, and I will quickly pause and say I do tread with caution using that term, because we have seen so many folks try in the past to unify APIs and we are still left in 2019 with what would be described as a multi-API mess out there. Though Intel's goals include offering a unified portfolio of developer tools across CPU, GPU, FPGA, and AI, for example, for mapping out software to hardware as efficiently as possible. And since Intel do have significant familiarities with gaming engines, having acquired the Havoc engine in 2007 and subsequently selling it to Microsoft in 2015, they certainly know a thing or two about three-dimensional physics. Though at the same time, it's also good to see Microsoft focus heavily on improving DX12 and hopefully one day releasing Age of Empires 4, which originally used the Havoc engine with Age of Empires 3 all those years ago. Please, Microsoft, uh, just release AOE 4 already and stop this suffering. Anyway, ultimately, Intel is looking to come into the scene in 2020 with nothing but thunder and lightning, and the general manager of Intel's visual technologies team, Ari Raunch, said in an interview that this is totally new IP, that is intellectual property. And for Intel, it is not related to the decade old failure, Larrabee, but rather 2020's discrete GPU solution, codenamed Arctic Sound, will not be just focused on price and performance, according to Ari, but apparently will offer its own unique feature set to spice up games. Kind of like maybe what Nvidia attempted with RTX, but in many people's eyes failed. Maybe Arctic Sound might be the chilling blow Nvidia needs to bring better price performance to the market. Or of course, it could be just another white walker with a fixation on your wallet. Only time will tell, but furthermore, on top of all this, Intel are very serious with them having already even taped out the second generation discrete graphics for 2022, codenamed Jupiter Sound. So the intentions are very real this time, and to even quote the famous rapper 50 Cent, this is as real as being real gets. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then like button's down there. Also, the uh, Insta link is somewhere here. The sub button's down there. If you end up clicking that, there's a little bell. That if you hit that, you'll get notified as soon as the videos are dropping in your sub box. And yeah, there's some hot videos coming out, not chilling ones. So make sure you stay tuned for them, guys. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of 2020. Do you think it's going to be a three-way battle or do you think Team Blue is going to give some hard competition to NVIDIA. And uh, I don't know, let us know in the comments. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.